Good evening, Mr. Nethercott. And good evening to you too, my good sir. Can I be of any help? You don't really make a living from your scribblings, do you, Richard? No, sir, I don't. I work so hard. I put all my time, my energy, my devotion into the precise carving of words. When she was younger, my mother was a painter and a poet. She told me many times how poor her artist friends were and how she helped them. My parents pay for my rent, my food and my clothes. All I have to give them in return is lies they do not believe. You seem embarrassed. Someday I hope to proudly offer my first publication to my parents. Until that day, I'll remain the failure of a son they have to support. This could be the box Lewis thought he lost. A love letter from Joe. O. Peterson's wife addressed to Barrett Lewis. Who should I give it to, I wonder?
Fancy buying something, sir? You never lose your focus, do you? Barrett, you had an affair with Joe's wife, didn't you? Yeah, I did. She's the only woman I loved. My first regret is that she stayed with Joe after Harry was born. The second is I never shed a tear when she died. Did you ever try talking to Joe? Never. But I suspected he knew everything, even without knowing it. And he decided to make me pay in his own way. Do you mean... you're Harry's father? No one will ever know for sure. And it's better that way. And I don't believe I'd have been all that bad as a dad. Right then. Good evening, Harry. Sure. Even my dreams are soaked with glue. So, may I ask you a few questions? I'm not bothered. What could be worse? Do you remember when Barrett Lewis was close to your family? To your mother? Not really. I was too young. But I remember it was a happier time. Mr. Lewis was funny. He often had dinner with us. Why are you sad, then? Because it hurts to remember a time when my father used to laugh and smile. It hurts to realize he's as sad as me now. How was he towards you? He was nice, I guess. He never forgot my birthday. He always offered me books. I liked books. Goodbye, young man. Is there only pain and suffering in this world? You again? What do you want this time? Goodbye, Mr. Peterson. Barrett, you... You again? I think the documents in this box could be of some interest to you. Really? Where'd you get it? I found it in an abandoned building nearby. I thought you might want to keep these letters. Let me see. Ah, uh, letters about my boy. Thank you, sir. You do not appear surprised or pained by this. Surprised about what? Harry's my son, I'm his father, and that's all there is to know, don't you think? Yes. I suppose you're right. Here's a little something for your trouble. And to remind you to keep your mouth shut about all this. Goodbye. Help you? Goodbye, Mr. Would you like me to revive you? Good evening, Christina. Change your mind, Mr. Reed? Clayton Darby claims he will expose the crisis in Whitechapel to all of London. Do you believe him? I believe Clayton's courage will erode with time, until he finally leaves Whitechapel to start another fight somewhere else. Why this skepticism? How can you speak about starvation if you've never been hungry? Or about poverty, 
or anything else you have never suffered from. Are you talking from experience? I've seen your type come here to get a good fuck in a cheap room or a dark alley before going back to their fancy houses in the West End. Goodbye, men. Still want more from Christina? When we spent the night together, my wallet went missing. Are you calling me a thief? I don't have your stupid wallet. I know you. You're a nice girl. Can't we solve this amicably? No, I don't think so. And if you think you know me just because we shared the bed together, you're just a lousy and arrogant journalist. Can I help you? Tell me, Clayton. Do you really think this young woman stole your wallet? Christina. Yes. I recently met her. A nice girl. Despite her questionable conduct. How exactly did you meet Christina? During my investigation, I offered my hotel room to her to rest and get away from the street. And what happened? The next morning, my wallet and my watch had disappeared. I suppose that's what you get for being a good Samaritan. If you are going to sleep with a lady of the night, Clayton, I would advise you to be cautious. I can't really be mad at her, though. She's just trying to survive. She doesn't have many options. Was it wise to become so intimate with a woman you were supposed to interview, Clayton? Maybe it was. But I have learned to look for the inner truth and beauty in people. You're right. I know little of your situation. What can you tell me about Christina? She is very sensitive. So nostalgic about her country. I saw her cry once because she'd lost a precious souvenir from her homeland. What was it? A scarf her brother gave her before she came to England. Why are you so concerned? You seem to have something on your mind, Mr. Duff. That we could make peace if I could find it and give it back to her. But I'm afraid she lost a scarf somewhere during her night shift. Goodbye, Mr. Good evening, Doctor. I found this scarf. I believe its owner would be happier to receive it from you. Dr. Reed, I may be a humble and dogged reporter, but I recognize a gentleman when I see one. Take this for your trouble. Mr. Darby, I believe your feelings for Christina are deeper than you might admit. I'm the journalist here. I'm the one who makes assertions. But as a journalist, you also have to honor the truth. So, what is the truth about you and Christina? I won't use the word romance, but yes, I do care for her. A lot. I hope the feeling is mutual. Ridiculous, is it not?
I believe love has neither boundaries nor rules, Mr. Darby. Even if society says the opposite. I hope more people will listen to your advice, Doctor. Starting with Christina. Goodbye, Mr. Good evening, Christina. Change your mind, Mr. Reed? Clayton's feelings towards you are romantic and serious. Is this feeling mutual, Christina? That is the least of my concerns, Dr. Reed. Perhaps Clayton has time to think about these things, but I don't. If you had time to question your heart, what would it say? That men are pigs. But it doesn't bother me as long as they pay. Did you steal Clayton Darby's wallet? Tell me the truth, Christina. Of course I stole it. But I never thought he would come back to look for it. Why did you do it? He seems to trust you. For a time I thought he was different from other men. In the end, he just wanted to sleep with me. Same as the others. Perhaps Clayton is different. Maybe you two should talk. A conversation couldn't hurt. I know what I am and what people call me. I sleep with men for money. If I can accept that, why can't he? No. My future is with the ones I love, not with Clayton Darby. The ones you love? The money you stole is not for you, then. My brother is still in our hometown in Romania. I am the only one who can buy him a ticket to England. Is it worth risking your health and your life for your brother's safety? He's the only family I have left. I had to leave Romania without him. I can't be happy until he is near me again. I understand your concern. I spent many months away from my family when I served on the front line in France. Every time I write to him, I fear I won't receive an answer. It kills me to know he is still there. But what about your life, Christina? Are you so worried about your brother's survival that you will risk your own? You think you know it all because you fought in the war. But my brother is no soldier. I know. We all understand the risks to soldiers. But we don't necessarily recognize the civilian casualties caused by these conflicts. Yes. Wars are decided by rich men who will never take the risk of being shot, raped, or maimed. Does your brother know what you do to earn the money to bring him here? Don't be simple, of course not. And he must never know. Everything will be different once he is here with me. You are a tough woman, Miss Popper. I admire that. Each time I was going to give up, I would look at that scarf my brother gave me. It gave me enough strength for another day. And then, I lost it. Goodbye, miss.
It's locked. Carnage. Is Father Whitaker's disciple among the bodies, I wonder? This man's far too old to be Samuel. No. By the look of his clothes, this man's a docker. It's locked. Shouldn't you go back home? where you'll be safe. Maybe later. But for now, I need to talk to my husband at the cemetery, Mr. Reed. Samuel isn't here. I had better follow the blood trail. As I feared, Samuel no longer preaches the good word.
thirst for blood. Good evening, Mr. Whittaker. It's Father Whittaker, my son. So, are you still lost in your rational delusions? Why did you send Samuel to the cemetery, Tobias? What did you see there? I sent him on a vision. A dream of a dreadful and laughing queen covered with blood. Sleeping with the dead and feeding on the fear of the dying. A laughing queen dressed in blood. Tell me more. This epidemic is her feast, the announcement of her return. Against her, science is no more than a child's toy. But who is she? She is the mother of harlots and abomination of the earth. She is Babylon, drunk on the blood of the saints. Why did you send- I sent him on a vision. You sent a man to die because of a stupid vision. I have heard enough of your nonsense. Goodbye. Good evening. It's father. Tobias Whittaker, confess why you burnt those people alive. I have done what no one was ready to do. I will smite the flesh of the unclean to protect the righteous. You are just another heartless murderer, exploiting the epidemic to kill with impunity. No! No. The only way to contain the spread is to strike at the source itself. The proliferating sick. You're not the savior of London. You're just a glorified sadist. I take no pleasure in this awful cleansing, Dr. Reed. I am only driven by the thousands of innocents I save each night. What do you mean? All Quite a judgment. Are you? I am. I have found Samuel, your disciple. I am afraid I have bad news. I already expected the worst. He should already have come back. He is dead, isn't he? Yes. He is now. The epidemic took him. Samuel steadily made donations to our cause. He would have rewarded you himself if you'd found me in that awful cemetery. Please accept this money. Your disciple, Samuel, stole from the dead in Stonebridge Cemetery. I have proof of his crime, and proof of his death. No! Samuel was the best of us. So devoted, so zealous. He gave all he had for the cause. He tirelessly preached the good word. He defiled the dead with his petty thefts. That's how he financed your misguided crusade. Think what you will. When this city is saved, he will be praised for his devoted fortitude. He walked boldly into the mouth of abomination. Your precious Samuel used you. He was an immoral crook. <sighs> if that's true, and he will be my burden to bear during this endless night. I have heard enough of it. 